I'll admit, it was always the transporters from Star Trek that I wanted, but this technology might be one better for humanity. Hi everybody, I'm Krista Lee Malone and this is the Technophiles Newscast. Today we're talking about replicators. You know, replicators, like in Star Trek. I say like because it's not exactly something out of nothing. It does take a lot of energy, but this is closer than we've ever been before. So this idea is based off of Einstein's deceptively simple E equals MC squared equation. Basically what this means is if you have this much mass and you have this much energy, they're going to be equal. So if you have this much energy, you should be able to create this much mass and vice versa. Right now, we already do this with mass, right? You can take mass, like wood, you can burn it, you have energy. Now we wanna take energy and create mass. Now right now, this is all very theoretical, but on paper, it should work. And to test this, and I'm sure also because it's just really cool, some European scientists are right now building the biggest, most powerful laser the world has ever seen. Now what they'll do with this laser is blast it into a vacuum and try to create particles. The reason we think this should work is because a vacuum's not quite as empty as we've been led to believe. There are all sorts of these tiny virtual particles that only last for a very short period of time. They're called virtual because they last for such a short period of time that I can't even express to you how short it is. Mostly, these virtual particles would collide into each other and then annihilate each other. And this is where we got our ideas of vacuums being empty. In theory, if we take this laser and we blast it in, it should be able to rip these particles apart so they can't collide with each other. In this way, we should be able to create a few particles of matter that have actual mass. Now granted, creating a few particles is a far cry from creating your own Pikachu hoodie. But we have to start somewhere, and basic research is the place to do it. Of course, there's still a few kinks to work out as well, such as how to generate the ridiculous amount of energy you need just to create these few little particles. I will start the Pikachu farm and create all the energy to get all the particles. Yeah, see, it's not a kink at all. We just raise a bunch of Pikachus, we have a Pikachu farm, they create all the energy, and then we have replicas and hoodies for everybody. <laughs> So right now, energy is a problem, but this won't be a problem for long because think about it. Our energy technology is getting more and more advanced and more and more sustainable. In fact, I'm gonna talk about that on Wednesday. For now, you can comment below and tell me what would you prefer, a replicator or a transporter? You can also tweet us at TechnophilesPod or find us on Facebook and iTunes at Technophiles Podcast. We also have a website at www.technophilespodcast.com. See you Wednesday. We hire new people to raise Pikachus, generate energy, make particles, replicators for everyone. Yes, cage free, free range, humane Pikachu farm. They're very delicate creatures. You can't keep them caged up. He doesn't even go in his Pokeball. No Thunderstone at Pikachu farm. You need the Pikachu, not the Raichu, because they're cuter. <laughs> <laughs>